Okay, and with that, I'm going to assume that I got the full uh, 55 minutes. And all right, I have a couple of quick little uh, slides, some uh, house rules. All right, um, I'm Sarah Ford, uh, developer evangelist for Microsoft uh, for Northern California. Uh, and I used to work on Coplex, and a lot of people know me from the Visual Studio Tip Series. All right, house rules. I'm going to do 101 demos in 55 minutes, and if I make it, you get my Visual Studio uh, ebook. Uh, please don't take notes. This is not a really like a presentation style where you should like take notes and, and, and the traditional style. This is more of like a challenge, just something fun to try. Uh, you can also check in the chat room. We have Zane, who's continuing the Visual Studio tips, and also my old, my old 382 tips from 2008. And yes, we're working on um, the next version of the Visual Studio book together. So please, please, please follow Zane. All right, um, the accents in New Orleans. So uh, that's why this is being recorded. So you can go back and try to figure out what, what, what was I saying. Um, and I tried back in May, missed it by 15 seconds. And also a couple of years ago, I tried and just like way, way, way failed with 2008. All right, um, obviously hold all the questions. And with that, on your marks, get set. And yeah, lack of dramatic start. But um, start the timer. And we'll do 55 minutes. And I will stick around for questions afterwards. And all right, on your marks, get set, and go. All right, our first tip is, uh, why is Visual Studio green? That's because of the new accessibility model that came out um, and with the Visual Studio extensions. If you go to Extension Manager, and I'll cover this later in more tips, but I have one tip called the Visual Studio Color Theme Editor, which will, when installed, allows you to pick themes. Normally, I would have it, the default would, would be like a, the, the blue color, but I like green. So that's tip number zero, why is Visual Studio green? Tip number one, all right, uh, how not to accidentally cut or copy a blank line. How many of you have ever come along and say, hey, I wanted to cut some text? So you come along, boom, 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 you hit cut, and then you realize you come over here, and instead of hitting uh, Control uh, V to paste, you hit Control C. I promise I did that. Um, and then you realize it, and you try to hit Control V as fast as you can, but you never, ever will beat the editor. If you've run into that problem, you can go to Tools, Options. You can go to um, Text Editor, All Languages General. And here, you can uncheck cut, a copy um, commands when, to blank lines when there is no selection. And now if we written repeat, I will then again cut. I promise I hit Control C here. And now when I hit B, bam, Control V ignored the uh, blank line. All right, n tip number uh, two, how to cycle through the clipboard ring. How many of you have come along and you say, I want to cut this text out? And then you're like, oh, I want to put this into a region. And then you come up here and you copy the region. And then, boom, you make this all pretty. And then you realize, oh, no, I've how do I get back? Because if I hit Control V, I'm just going to get what I just pasted. Hit Control Shift V, press it once, press it again. It will go up the stack of everything that you have cut, and it will hold 20 items. All right, tip number three, how to use the undo stack. And notice I've been doing a lot of undos and redos. You could come up here and use undo and redo. And I could redo all this or just undo all of that and get back right back to where I was. All right, tip number four is an, uh, it's something new for 2010, automatic highlighting of symbols. I can go over, pop over here. So notice that um, I have this symbol called MSA object. I can click this guy. Notice that all my MSA object and the methods are highlighted, and I can also press Control, Shift, Down, Arrow to navigate. Awesome. All right, tip number five, how to navigate forward and backwards using go back markers. I could take at length of what is a go back market, but for now, just bear with me. You can click forward, navigate forward, navigate back. Notice that there are cool little keyboard shortcuts for it. And also with navigate back, you can also specify exactly where do you want to jump to in the file. All right, number six, this is new. How to collect how to collapse a region with ease. Okay, yeah, before you could go and you can eh, try to find the uh, little um, button to click. But now in 2010, you can also click anywhere in the region. You'll see that as can't really see it, but it's highlighted a little bit faintly. You can double click in there and collapse it. Uh, also, it's uh, Control um, MM is a keyboard cord to collapse and toggle a region. All right, All right. Uh, number seven, how to reach a navigation bar via a keyboard shortcut. If you ever want to jump up to that word verify in that, uh, that method bar, you can hit uh, Control F2. Notice that I jump up to it. I can down arrow and toggle over. 
All right, uh, and then you can hit escape to pop back to the other two. All right, tip number eight is new. It's called how to use Navigate 2. Navigate 2 is awesome, also awesome. Um, control comma will bring up the Navigate 2 dialog. And in this, me in this little uh, simple application, I know I have like a handle method, because or I know I have a mouse method. I want to see all the, the methods that contain uh, mouse. Oh, look, handle mouse. Double click on it, and awesome. That's how I use to get the XY coordinates whenever I hover over something. Control comma, very cool. Tip number nine is how to split a window and create new ones. I'm going to pop over to um, um, this, other, this other project. And here, um, yeah, so why am I doing that? Because the other one was in VB. This one works for C Sharp. So any, in all of them, all the editors, you can split. But what if you wanted to make a new window? You can get a window, um, new window, and notice that you get a second view on the same editor and then the same code. You can right click and say new vertical tab group and check this out. I have four different views now of the same uh, file. So that's kind of neat. All right, uh, tip number 10, pop back to MSA Verify, is how to show line numbers in, uh, in the editor. So tools, options, text editor, all languages general. And here you can say show, display line numbers for all the languages. Pop there, and then bam, we see them. Tip number 11 is how to enable virtual space. In the same editor, or in the same pane, uh, tools, options, text editor, they're all languages general. Enable virtual space, click that guy. And now what is virtual space? Notice that I can highlight out here. This drove me batty as a software tester when I had to test the editor. I don't like it, so I turned that off. Something else that was less driving me nuts was a uh, word wrap. And notice that you can show visual uh, glyphs for uh, word wrap. Word wrap. Um, so now notice that you get the little glyph here and notice that it says handle mouse. Um, not my cup of tea, but hey, maybe you, um, maybe you want it. Um, the other one is, notice that I have like all these dot, dot, dots. Oh, let me turn that off. Um, notice that I have all these like dot, dot, dots. That's um, show visible white space. And where do you find that at? Uh, but editor, or edit, advance, uh, view white space. Why this is not a tool's options, I do not know. I, don't, I think that if they ever changed it, that no one would be able to find it. So that's how you enable visual white space. And if I put in a tab, change to a, um, an actual like little Tab. Um, let's see, uh, how do you change the color? Maybe the pale blue is just too little. You can go to environment, fonts and colors, and then up here for um, text editor, there is visual white space, and let's make it line. Um, I'll press OK. And so, OK, um, I told you I would do 101 demos. I just never said they all would be working. All right, I'll play with that later. How to increase the text editor tooltip font size. You might notice that in my, uh, um, if I pop over here to my MSA object, yeah, let's go. If I type in MSA object, you might notice that this is still kind of like all these things are bigger. Um, how you can enable that is back in tools, options, text editor, fonts and colors, it shows set text editor settings, but you'll never find it down in here. You need to go up here, and you need to look for environment, um, where is, uh, uh, which one was that? Statement completion, oh, right in front of me. Statement completion and editor tool tips. Guys, and that was tip number um, four, um, how to increase font size for the uh, editor tool tip. And statement completion, that also came out in 2008. Uh, tip number uh, 15 is how to zoom in and out with the uh, editor. And so this is actually good. Um, if we had a, a mouse wheel in 2010, you can hit control mouse wheel and it would zoom the text. I don't have a mouse on me, so what I'm going to do is come over here and notice that I'm in text other font, uh, the, the view on it. It's not the font size, but just the view. And you can also come in here and type like 105% if I'm. Uh, so that's new to 2010. All right, tip number 16 is, let's say like you are back in 2008, because not, not everyone has uh, um, <clears throat> 2010 yet. So if you go into uh, macros, macros IDE, over here, under samples, accessibility, you'll see a bunch of macros. I actually wrote these macros back in 2005, and it's my 133 line contribution to Visual Studio, and so I'm, I'm excited to see it's still in here. So these are the two you want to care about, increase and decrease text editor font size. 
figure that out because I like talking about the code I wrote. Um, but the main real tip here is that you can bind a macro to the keyboard shortcut. So if we go back to tools options and we'll go to the keyboard and from here if I type in macro do the accessibility ones here I have them already bound to increase control shift alt and up arrow and there and arrow so here I can just press control shift up arrow and notice that the, the font size is increasing and unlike the one the guy down here which is just for this particular view this will persist across all of the editor views because you're actually increasing decreasing the text on size. So awesome, awesome for 2005 and 2008 and also 2000. All right, tip number 17. Well, since we're in that area, fonts and colors. All right, so you might say, OK, what is the difference between automatic and default? Automatic comes from whatever the um, operating system's default colors are. Or automatic um, comes from the operating system colors. Whatever, if you have a blue theme, a green theme, or an orange theme, high contrast, that's what automatic does. It says, okay, we're going to pull from the operating system. Default is whatever Visual Studio says it should be. Now, something that's a little crazy is that for text, for like plain text or just regular text, its default is automatic to pull from the operating system. That is the difference between default and automatic if you've ever wanted. Tip number 18 is how do you print boldly? Have you ever just set up your editor and everything's so awesome, ready to go for printing, and then when you go to the printer, it's not bolded, it's not italicized, you're like, what happened? You need to come up here and select printer. Now it's showing you a whole different set of printer options. Now this button right here, it actually changes to a use dot dot dot, and I don't know what this UI is called that you turns into this drop down thing on the button where you have defaults of text editor settings. But here, if you had already customized everything to be pretty, you can just click use uh, the text editor settings. You don't have to. Uh, we do all of that. All right, tip number 19 is um, how to use box and column selection. Let's pop over back to this guy. All right, um, how many of you have like cut in some like GUIDs or whatever into a file or you wanted to select like vertical blocks? Oh, look, it's green now. That's line. All right, uh, I guess you have to ref refresh the editor. I'm talking about the little visual white. All right. Um, so have you ever come on and you want to just like select to straight down? You can. This has been in the shell since 2002 and maybe even earlier. You press Shift Alt, and then you can either mouse or arrow, and here you can press down. Now, you can cut and you can copy whatever you want. And that's a very line on site. And no way people apply for this because that is multi line edit, new for 2010. So, uh, tip number 21 is how to format the current document. Have you ever cut in text and you pay, and it, it's all crazy, it's all, all over the place? Um, it's, I have a setting that's not allowing me to do it, but we'll do it from here. But um, you can press Control KD and it will format the current document. Um, you can also just specify to format the current selection, but there's no point. You might as well just learn one keyboard shortcut, which is Control KD, because it's very, 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 very fast. Trust me, I used to have to test all of this. All right, tip number 22. Pop back over to my um, C Sharp project. And yes, uh, they keep striving, striving, striving for feature parity across the languages. But I also like to call out the fact as a user, too, that, hey, you know, um, I use the code in VB as well. I would like to see some of these things also be in, uh, in VB. We need to keep, we need to hold that team on us to uh, uh, feature parity. All right, okay, um, tip number 22, how to remove unused using statements. All right, you can uh, just right-click in here and say reorganize usings, and here remove unused using state usings. Now look up at the using statements at the top, and the, the last three are going to, bam, remove. So that is that uh, um, that tip. Oh, that took me hours when I had to do that by hand. All right, um, tip number 23 is how to remove a project from the start page. Again, I would like make you all clap if I could see you in front of me. In the start page, finally, right click, remove from list. How hard was that to implement? Thank you, Visual Studio team. Thank you. All right, tip number 24, how to set a bookmark and navigate among them. All right, let's just pop over here. We'll just set some bookmarks. Um, control KK, look at bookmark, control KK, another bookmark. If you get a view, bookmark window, and now you can toggle, you can navigate to, you can create even folders for the guys. I don't really use bookmarks, but if you want to play, if you want a way um, to, to save bookmarks just for yourself, 
uh, here's a. All right, uh, number 10, 25. Um, you can bookmark all your quick find results. This is one of those. I've, I don't know how many times I've seen the. Um, I've seen this. Uh, uh, this dialogue come up, and I don't think I've ever. Ever. Um, document. Notice this button right here until I had to test it. Bookmark all. You search that. Look, it's uh, it's uh, at the bookmarks over here to the side. But that is, uh, and then there's also keyboard shortcuts to uh, clear all your bookmarks as well. All right. Uh, tip number twenty-six: How they increase TallySense uh, font size, and I kind of showed this one already a little bit, but um, but that if you want to increase your t uh, IntelliSense or statement completion, it's up here. And I'm already uh, maxed out, so uh, how to increase the environment fine. Now, you might notice that my, uh, my menus up here are bigger. My solution explorer is bigger. All these things are bigger. Uh, if that is actually in the same place, it's at environment font. This came out in Visual Studio 2008. And this way, you can, um, before Visual Studio wasn't looking at the, uh, um, at the operating system fonts. So here, you can actually up the uh, the font size of the entire environment. Like expect, it's very useful for presentations. All right, tip number twenty-eight is statement completion via uh, tabs. Uh, let me pop back over to my project. And here, if I start typing, if you notice a common and all, and if you ever wanted to know the keyboard shortcut to comma to toggle between those, it's Alt comma. And all plus, all comma, and all plus. Yeah, all the things that uh, you never. It's polar tricks to impress your coworkers uh, later on today in the office. All right, so something new about IntelliSense for Visual Studio 2010 is how to do Pascal and substring matching in IntelliSense. So let's say like I'm typing along MSA object, MSA object dot, and I'm like, okay, I know the method that I want to call has the word text in it. So I start to type text. Notice what happens to uh, statement completion. It's actually now filtering, doing a substring matching. It's no longer doing begins with. And you can also do Pascal case in where CBS will find checkbox state. Uh, another thing, uh, uh, tip number uh, 29 is how to do Pascal uh, or how to enable a suggestion mode. So you go in along and you're typing. And I want to create a method called get. I don't know why, but I want to create this method. So when I create, open the parentheses, it's going to insert get hashtag. It, IntelliSense thinks that I work for it. No, no, no. I want it to work for me. So in 2010, they have a new mode called uh, suggestion mode. Control Alt Space. When that is toggled, now if you go MSA object dot, notice that it's typing along with me at the top. So now I can press open paren and I get my get method. So great for TDD where you don't have the method defined. All right. Um, tip number 31. You can insert a snippet by pressing snippet tab tab. All right. So let's say like I want to insert some snippet. I don't know. Um, um, let's say like uh, if step statement. <clears throat> so I type into the the, the keyboard uh, the, uh, the name of the snippet um, if. Now I press tab once to remove IntelliSense, and then when I press tab again, insert snippet. So remember snippet tap tap. All right, tip number thirty two is new. How to browse uh, new uh, code snippets and add new ones. All right, so back in the talking about uh, code. Uh, you can go to Tools, Code Snippet Manager, and up here you can check out that they have new ones for um, XML, JScript, and uh, SQL scripts for uh, 2010. These were here since so five. Um, but like if you hear in HTML, uh, you can also go and visit the uh, the snippet directly. So let's say like if I want to tweak this code snippet a little bit, or maybe change the keyboard shortcut, I can actually highlight in here. And open this file, and I can play directly in the editor there for that snippet. All right, uh, so and then you could cut and paste and uh, create your own snippets that way too. All right, snippet number thirty-three. How do I insert a code snippet around a block of code? Um, again, I believe this is only for uh, C sharp. Let's pop back over to that guy. And here, let's say, like, I want to put this under in the conditional state statement. So I come here, and then I can do, I always forget the keyboard shortcut for it, but it's under IntelliSense, and then surround swip, like that. And I want to say, 
I put it in a uh, for loop, let's say, bam, now I can and and I'll pop that off. Oh. All right, uh, so next. Um, Tip number 34 is uh, behold the power of uh, incremental search. Uh, incremental search is a very powerful uh, search in, uh, in Visual Studio, but the scope is limited to the uh, current editor. But what I like about it is just that you press Control i Notice that the, um, you don't get any obtrusive UI in front of you, like the Control f dialog. Just the mouse um, pointer changes to binoculars. And now when I start to type MSA object, notice that it's finding it. And I can, click, I can hit Control i or Control shift i to reverse the search. Incremental search, very, very cool. Um, Tip number 35, you can use Control F to search for the currently selected word. So let's say like I want to find that MSA object again. Control F. Oops. I tried to do. I think I hit F1. All right. Um, control F3. Notice that I'm searching for whatever is currently selected. So it just save you keep little little um, savings and time will add up tremendously over the hours, days, weeks, and months. Uh, tip number 36 is uh, sometimes like you'll be on a word and you're like, oh, I want to search for something else. You hit control F, but it's populated with that. If you don't like that experience, you can go to the tools options dialog and on environment, uh, find and replace. You can say uh, uncheck automatic populate. Now if we rinse and repeat, the MSA object, and hit control F. Ah, ah, why is it doing that? All right, like again, um, interesting. Okay, we're going to have to, I'm going to have to play who that guy is. Yeah, there we go. Right, there we go. I think it was still it was getting it from here. That had to be cleared. But now when I do it. All right. So uh, tip number thirty-seven. You can look, use the last thing you search for. Let's say like I search for that MSA object. Okay, now it's saved. Notice that it's saved up here. So let's say I'm going along. I'm like, oh, I need to research for something. When the word research hits your head, press up three. And notice that I'm looking for that MSA object. Shift up three also works because it's pulling whatever's in here. All right. Uh, tip number Number 38, um, let's talk about like powerful searching. Uh, so if I go to this little button next to the uh, find combo box called find files, this is your Swiss army knife for searching for Visual Studio. Now normally you see all these by default, but notice I have this test app thingy. If we click this little innocent dot dot dot, this actually um, opens up a whole new world of searching and I can search beyond my current solution. So I already have a folder set up here. Press OK. And now if I do um, child count and find all, notice that it comes and it finds it here. I do double click it. And I'm in my push button. And we'll just pop over here and notice that this is in files. Oh, it's not a part. Now, it's a, tip number 39. It's really, really, really annoying. Very annoying that you have to be able to, you have to scroll all the way over to be able to read all of this. Now, there is a reg key that was introduced in like 2005 or 2008, and it's under HKCU. So, again, registry keys use it at your own risk, but it's under HKCU software, Visual Studio 10.0, and then it's under fine, and that's fine result format, and you can find all this information on our blogs. But let's say, like, I enable this and this gobbledygook, and now when I research, oh, uh, or I do the find and follows again, find all. Voila, look, I don't have to scroll anymore. I just see the information. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, tip number 40. Um, this is the file tab channel. You can come down here and see the file tabs, or see the files that are currently available or currently open in the, in the buffer. You can press Control, Alt, Down, Arrow to reach it, and it does type, support type ahead selection. Hit V, and I was there, and I hit Enter. Bam, I'm at a uh, very... Tip number 41, you can clo use, close all but this. Uh, tip number 42, you can copy a file's full file path. Um, I thought that this was like the best feature of um, all of uh, 2005. So now, there it is. Back, back up. And then you can also, this is genius open containing folder. That will save you right there, like 20 or 30 seconds. So every time you have to do it, you know, you don't have to press up for to go to the property browser to get the file path to open up in Explorer. You can just right click and do it. All right, tip number 44. How to close just the selected files you want. Have you ever wondered what this, uh, and let me open up a few. Um, have you ever wondered what this like Windows Windows thing does? Well, best use that I could find for it when you're, uh, they used to have different modes back in 2008, but for now, the best use of it is that if I just want to close these guys and keep another few files open, you can 
clock, which files to do. That's the Windows window. Tip number 45, how to use the IDE Navigator. Hit Control Tab. Look, I have a bird's eye view, but you have to hold down the Control key. And now you can arrow over and say, I want to be at the Solution Explorer. Tip number 46 is how to navigate among all open tool windows. And if I would, OK, I got a few open. All right, uh, press the Alt key and press, uh, hold down the Alt key and press F7. Now I'm still holding down the Alt key. And notice I can even just press Alt F7, or I can arrow up and down. All right, tip number 47 is some people just absolutely, oh, we got a nice little repeat. Um, some people just hate this thing. Let's say like you have a bunch of files open, a few more, two, two, two. All right, and I hit Control Tab. People like want that old school behavior back that it just goes through the file tabs. If that's you, you want to get the um, environment keyboard and here um, under choke um, uh, commands containing next document window nav. So it's the next document window nav. You want to remove this keyboard shortcut and make sure it's bound to like Control Tab. We'll remove this guy and we'll bind them to Control Tab. Bind, and then you also want to do previous. Um, document window nav, but in the sake of time, that I did it, and now control tab. This I got the old school behavior back. All right, tip number 48 is how to disable statement completion. Sometimes you, maybe you don't want statement completion popping up, you just want to be able to, to type. So from there, you can go to tools, options, text editor, all languages, general, and uncheck auto list members. And now when I type, I am alone in the world. Visual Studio will not recognize my existence, and that's only, so I'm going to go back. You can also hide the parameter info as well. Tip information. All right, tip number 49, um, how to customize what the tool window push pin does. So Here are these guys docked together. Uh, let's bring up the class view. I see. Go. I'm moving to now. Much to environment. Uh, I believe it's general and uh, auto hide effects active tool window only. I'll check that guy. And now it only does a solution. All right. Um, to number 50. Show auto hiding tool windows via the file channel. Um, auto hide channel. Um, if you come over here into this margin region, the cornfield area, and you right click, you can say, you can pick and choose which tool window if it's too much to hunt and pack for them. Uh, tip number 51, um, how to redock a tool window via the uh, keyboard. So let's say like I take a tool window out here, and I want to get it back back to where it was docked before. Hold down the control key and double click. I will put them back. Tip number 52 is you can maximize the tool window in the editor. I love doing this for the output window. So you get like build information and um, let's just get add some text and it's like I want to be able to read all this. Let's just say that it was longer. Um, what I can do is pop it out or and I can either select this guy or even say open a tab is tab document. Doc is tab document. They added the verb there so it throws for the sake of my demos I'm going to back into the uh... all right. Tip number 53 is, um, tip number 53 is multi-monitor support. Finally, 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 we have won. I, I started like an online petition back in 2004 on my blog to have this freaking All right, uh, <laughs> I've wanted this for so long. You can take a file tab, and you can finally, you can drag it out, and you can take it to a secondary monitor, and you can maximize it. So that is tip number 53. It makes me small. All right, tip number uh, 54 is that it actually responds to the Windows key. So hold down the Windows key and press left. Press up to maximize, plus right to right dock, and um, Windows key down will um, restore it. Tip number, uh, um, well, OK. Uh, but another tip is if you want to get back, hold Control and then double click it, and it will also redock it just like your Tip number 54 is new. Uh, that was tip number 54, how to, re how to snap around. And tip number 55 was how to put the file back into the file tab with the control double click. All right, tip number 56 is how, when I normally open up a file, notice that it enters on the left-hand side. We changed the behavior from 2002 to 2005 to do that. And you talk about VI versus Emacs and curly braces being on new lines versus uh, the same line. This is one of those holy wars. So if you go to environment um, documents, 
you can check insert documents to the right of existing tabs. And so now it's like if I go and reopen that accessible object, notice that it came in from the right. Um, I've gotten used to the old, uh, the new behavior, the left entering the left, and now. All right. Uh, tip number uh, 57. How to uh, customize the tool window X button. So again, you can have multiple um, guys dock together. And if you want some, uh, if you want the close button to affect just the active tool window only versus the entire group, you can go to environment general and you can uncheck close button affects active tool windows only. And now if I click this guy, all, both of them will go away. Um, I'll do it and four and I have to recheck that or I'll go crazy. All right, uh, tip number 58. How to access a toolbar within a tool window. Okay, so let's say like you want to get up here through the keyboard, through a keyboard shortcut and tab's not working for you. What you need to do is press shift then alt. And now notice that I'm up here. You can't do alt shift. It's got to be shift alt. And I don't have time to explain. All right, tip Number 59 is how to quickly access full screen mode. Um, you kind of like Power Visual Studio, it kind of has like a, uh, a way full screen. And this is a sort of a station when you do the conversation uh, back. Um, to your... That was tip number 59. All right, tip number 60 is how to enter uh, file window layout mode. So let's open up um, from a command prompt. Um, open Explorer. I guess if I could also just like, copy the file path, but we'll do it way. I already have a Visual Studio command prompt open. Um, so now, if I do push E and then I pick I in, and now say I want to open up uh, mainform.vb, e, e, main.vb, and it's it. And now, Visual Studio is uh, going to be, uh, we don't have time for this Visual Studio, <laughs> just launch it. Now, this is actually another window layout state. So there's four there's debug, there's design, design is where you code. Bug and design. Then that was a full screen, and this is the fourth one, which is file. When you open it up on the command line. All right. So that was tip number uh, uh, 60. All right. Tip number uh, 61. And I'm going to push D before get. Copy. Maybe you even learned a new tip with the. Uh, so, all right. Tip number uh, 61. You can use the keyboard to jump to the out output window panes. Okay, if you've ever wanted to toggle between run and debug or build or whatever these panes are, um, there is a, and it isn't bounded by default, but there is a next sub uh, pane, I believe it's called. Yeah, and, and I found this is something crazy. Window.next sub pane. So any window, tool window that has like these panes up here, you can bind it to something. And I had my control alt shift T, and notice I'm, I'm toggling a little slow, but I'm toggling between them. All right, tip number uh, 62 is that you can drag and drop code to the toolbox. Press Control X, go to the toolbox, and here I can um, I just grab like uh, this, uh, this file path for whatever reason. I can, um, yeah, I could drag and drop it, but let's just do it by the keyboard shortcut. Control, control X, press Control X to get to the toolbox. I press Control V, there it is. If I want to put it back, I'll put my cursor where I want it to be, go back to the toolbox, and just hit. Not fun. All right, uh, and you can also drag and drop over um, um, uh, controls as well. So if it was in XAML and I had a button, I could drag it over to the toolbox to save it. All right, like great for custom user control. All right, tip number 63 is you can use Control Alt Arrow to move among the toolbox tabs. All right, um, let me get to a form. Up a designer here, and this is just an old, old, old sample app that I've used for forever to demo Visual Studio stuff with. So yeah, if I wanted to quickly jump through all these tabs through the keyboard shortcut, I can um, press Control um, up arrow and jump through them all. Down arrow. All right, tip number 64 is switch between icon view and list view in the toolbox. So uh, if you want more room, uncheck list view, and now you have all the pretty icons. Check that back. All right, uh, tip number 65 is you can use show all to find your hidden um, toolbox control. So a lot of times, so um, what you see in the toolbox and a lot of 
different commands in Visual Studio, like in the toolbars or whatever, depends on the context of Visual Studio it's in. And a lot of times people will install third-party tools or whatever, and then they're like, oh no, did it actually get installed because they can't see it. So one of the ways you can verify something got installed in the toolbox is to right click and say show all and this will give you the entire world of all right tip number um, 66 is you can show custom tokens in the uh, task list so I want to close this guy go back to some code and in the task list um, uh, environment task list notice that I have a token list called uh, Sarah just like to do and hack and all these other guys um, now when I do Apps. And I go to my task list. There is, and notice that you have to be under comments, not um, user tasks. So the user tasks you can create this way, uh, but comments come from here. All right, um, very similar to bookmarks, but uh, don't have time to explain the between that. All right, but but actually bookmarks you have to or bookmarks don't touch the code. Task list actually touches, uh, except for user task. Um, okay, so tick number 67 is uh, how do you find out which development settings you last reset to? So if, if you ever went to this dialogue, or you remember this guy from um, um, from first launch, I am, this is the guy you're probably going to be seeing with some text at the top. Um, so I'm using general development settings. You might be wondering what settings that you are in. Uh, if you want to see the last thing that you either reset to or what you picked at first launch, you can go to back in the registry key, HKCU, um, and under the Visual Studio Hive, it's called Profile. And the Profile key, that was a key, that was a code name for it. We actually were going to call the settings file Profile Files back in the day. Um, but that changed the settings. And here you can see that I'm using the general. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, tip number 68 is you can create a macro. Uh, actually, no, uh, tick number 68, I changed this, is to the add reference dialog. Again, um, we, there's a joke among people who present with Visual Studio that you go to the add reference dialog and you just show the, um, the .NET tab and notice that it, they, it lazy loads in the background so it doesn't take forever in a day for it to come up. And usually we, we joke that all you have to do is demo that and walk off stage, you're done showing off uh, Visual Studio 2010. So add reference dialog. Oh, the other thing that they did too with the add reference dialog is by default it opens up to project instead of the .NET tab. I have to wait for forever. Um, tip number 69 is how to open up a file without any UI. I don't have too much time, but I will show you in the general development settings. It's different in C sharp. Um, you can hit control forward slash. Notice that I jump up the find combo box, and notice that there is a uh, system caret already installed for me, and I can do what's not open. Uh, uh, we'll do main form. FO, I have uh, file that open file already alias to FO, and then I want to do main form .vb. Now yeah, I even got the IntelliSense, and then bam, I just opened up a file without any uh, any UI. Now, tip number 70 is how do you have fun with this fine combo box? This thing can do all sorts of stuff. Um, when I was working on the book, our um, kind of like our one of our main architects for the Visual Studio IDE did not know this one, and also. Just a quick another extra tip. Notice that there's an extra um, bar over this files open in memory than what's actually being shown on the list. And that is because the uh, uh, the verification file that I want is the one. So again, crazy, crazy, crazy parlor tricks. Uh, but anyways, uh, verifications. See this MSAA verify objects? I'm going to copy that. Now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this up here. No system carrot. I'm going to press up 9. And notice that it set a breakpoint at the method because of that. Um, because what Visual Studio did was F9 is bound to debug.toggle breakpoint. And uh, the Visual Studio did debug.toggle breakpoint and took whatever was in the find combo box and used that as the additional parameter. So it did debug.toggle breakpoint on the verify MSAA objects. All right, tip number 71 is not how to show the start page on launch. So a lot of people want to get rid of the start page. So you go to environment startup. And here at startup, instead of saying show um, start page, do show empty environment. Now, tip number um, 72 is much more effective, in which is uh, load last loaded solution. So I'm actually going to uh, demo that. So I say, like, okay, notice what my cursor is here, the verify MSAA method. I shut down Visual Studio. And now when I relaunch it, 
visual, like when you go, so the idea is like you go home from work and then the, at night and you come in the next day or whatever the scenario might be. Um, the next time you launch Visual Studio, you are right back where you started. I know I used to have to like jot down, okay, where was I, where was I, what was I doing? At least Visual Studio will help you if you use that option. All right, uh, tip number 73 is how to use solution um, folders to hide projects. So there is up here, um, pop off show all files. Um, this is show all files. Be at the solution level. Yeah. Okay, at the solution level, you have this guy called add new solution folders. You click that guy, and now you could call him whatever. Um, you can actually put, if you have a ton of solutions, you can actually move them into this guy. And it's not going to interrupt the build. It's just a way of organizing your, um, your solutions. It's a visual representation. That's solution um, folders. Uh, tip number 74 is how to create temp or throwaway projects. So I'm going to create a, a, a new project dialog. You notice you have all the stuff here. But I don't want, like, like if you're like me, you have, have like the console application 53 phenomenon because you're too scared to delete old stuff because you don't know where you're using it at. So if you go to projects and solutions and on a general, you can uncheck same new projects when created. So now watch what happens when I create a new project. Oops, when I create a new project. There's none of that at the bottom, and so for the interest of time, I'm just going to create a quick, very simple application. And now I'm talking about um, the console application 53 phenomenon. And so now I can build, I can run, I can all do these. But until I do a destructive action, when I'm ready to, like, let's say I'm going to pop back to, like, uh, MSA verify, then it says, do you want to save or discard? I'm going to say, you know what? Throw it away. And the next time you start the shell, it'll Delete all that from um, from temp, and uh, so you won't get the console application for the top anymore. All right, tip number seventy-five is um, how to um, how to show the project um, how to show the project location is not trusted message box. So if we just go back here to project and solution. Warn user when the project is not trusted. This is the option that you want to uncheck. Like, like maybe you're opening a project that's on a UNC share and Visual Studio freaks out. Then you, you don't want to hit that message box again and again and again. Here's a um, overriding uh, option for it. Or maybe you want to get it back. Here's where you go. All right, tip number uh, 76 is how to show the miscellaneous project and solution explorer. So um, let's say, like, here for this test application code that we've been playing with, I had I was looking for that child count method in the uh, my push one that lived outside of the uh, project. This is like when I like you've already saw me shut down the shell and restart the shell. This file is still stuck around. Maybe you want to keep some extra files that don't um, they're not associated with the solution, but you want to or with the project, but you want to keep them around. So the way you do that is again tools options environment documents, and here there are show miscellaneous files and solution explorer, and you can even save X number of items. If I uncheck it, let me show you what the experience is. Not there, it's gone. The next time I shut down, that, that project's going to go away. Actually, it might actually go away now. Oh, okay, good. Good Visual Studio. Good guy. I'm used to so t like testing it. But 2010, I haven't spent as much time. 2005 and 2008 were my the IDEs I knew the most about. Um, I spent all my time on. I almost have 10,000 hours on this ID. Um, all right, so tip number uh, 770. 77 is how to type a how type ahead selection works. So in the solution explorer, things are associated by by name. But you can also type like let's say like I taught I type um, uh, V E R. You can actually do support um, type ahead selection in the solution explorer. Tip number 78. I'll just put you in the ballpark. Is how to add a solution to a solution. So we're gonna do file open project. What on earth am I talking about? Now. Let's say like you have a, a solution, like you're going to have your main solution, and you know what? You have another solution that has a bunch of other projects, and you kind of like want to merge the solutions together. Well, over here, and so we're opening a project, but you can also say open solution files. And then you would point to, um, let's just say I wanted to merge this one together. I would go to, ah, I would click this guy, and I would open this guy, and then it would pull in all of my uh, solutions all my projects associated with that under the main um, MSA. All right, uh, tip number 79 is uh, how to have the Solution Explorer show active, track the active file. So um, here, here, let's say like I'm at main form. Notice that it's jumping around with me. Uh, it's a little object that goes with me. That is under projects and solutions. 
and then always our track active item in the solution explorer. If I untrack that now, um, and I click, notice that the solution explorer is still remaining on this object. Kind of that behavior. All right, uh, tip number 80 is um, we're going to get into some of the debugging stuff because I like to save the best to last and make it dramatic in this talk. How to use trace points to log stuff in your code. I'm going to use that control comma um, and look for that handle mouse. There it is. I'll jump to it. And now I'm going to want to record. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to actually record what's going on with the trace points. So I'm going to do trace point. You know this insert trace point. And I'm just going to do the xy coordinates. X. Like the brain shuts off when I have to actually think about what I'm typing. All right. And now continue execution. Got all that right. OK. Here we go. Notice that it's a diamond. Now, no, I haven't demoed this app yet. We've just been playing with the code. It's a testing tool. So I'm just moving the crosshairs around. Doo -doo -doo. Now. When I go to the output window, notice that without touching my code, I have like a printf statement. I'm tracking. All right, and then we'll stop that guy. All right, um, how do you use data tips to edit a um, variable's content? So let's, uh, yeah, I could just stay here because it's x, y. Uh, actually, I'll bump, jump over here. I'm going to do a time. All right, so I'm going to set a couple of breakpoints. We'll rinse and repeat. I'm going to grab that verify button. That verify just it reached a great point. Okay, so the first tip is this one it can't change, but normally uh, let's find something that I can. Yeah, so notice that I can come here and I can actually type inside of this. I actually don't want to do this, but I'm just going to cancel out. So valid, yeah. So if you had like a number here, it was just like a string or some type of variable, you can change it. Object, so that's tip number 81. You can actually use the data. Edit, and you don't have to actually drag it down to the watch window. Number 82 is okay, so they did a lot of work with the data tips. I can actually leave a comment now. So I'm going to take this pin, I'm going to click it, and notice that it's now pinned, but actually, I'm off of my script. All right, so uh, okay, I'm used to it showing the comments. All right. Um, can't leave comments on the data tips. So I'm not seeing. All right. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, it's just pinned. I'm just going too fast. Imagine that. All right, so there it is. Once it's pinned, um, you can drop down the arrow and say, "Hey, Dev, I think there is a there's a bug." Type. All right. Now notice that, like, I am gonna uh, like unpin it, but notice that it's still uh, kind of um. It keeps the comments. Now I'm going to stop, stop debugging. Notice that it still sticks around. And notice that when I go away, Solution Explorer, when I hover over it, it says value from last debug session. And it also keeps the uh, the comment. So that's tip number 82, how to leave comments. Tip number 83 uh, is how to export. So we can go to the debug, export data tips. Um, and I'm going to save this to um, you know, just desktop. And I'm going to say data tips. Okay, that guy. And now I'm going to clear here. Now debug port data tips. And uh, now when I open it, bam, I got my guys back. And I can even, when I hover over it, it's not going to know the value because, like I said, I have eight points. I'll just drop it under um, debug windows breakpoints window. Here, you can actually label them. So we'll right click and say uh, edit label, and then I can say P. That's my alias of work, Sarah F at Microsoft.com because you're probably going to have questions for me later. And then I can say the dev, I'll add that guy, and those like, labels, and then search for your among your breakpoints. Awesome. And then tip number 85 is I can also, I can also export that. So debug. Um, I can export it. And ah, that's a data tip. All right. I can here. Here I can export it. A, uh, a breakpoint to investigate with just so file. And then I can pop off that. I want to delete all these guys. That's it. Go, delete, delete. 
and now I can import them. So now I'm like back on the developer machine, and maybe you have the breakpoint. Go. So, tip number 85. Tip number 86 is how to select a startup project from the uh, Solution Explorer. So sometimes if you have multiple projects and you're constantly, um, you always forget, oh, I have to manually say this is a startup project. What you can do is go to Tools, Options, um, Projects and Solutions, and I believe it's Build and Run. And here, on the start box, for new solutions, use the currently selected project as a startup project. You have to check this thing first, and then whenever you create new solutions and they have multiple projects, you don't have to worry about um, doing the right click and say set as a startup project. Wherever your cursor is, that, that project, let's say it was this guy, would be the startup project. All right, um, tip number uh, 87, how to make the statement completion key transparent. You type in MSA object, and but I want to see what's under it. Hold the control key. That's what it works in 2008 as well. Uh, tip number 88 is you can use control doc to invoke a smart tag. So let's say I'm up here and I rename this to 2. And you see you got the red line, and people try, try, try to get their uh, mouse up to it. You can hit control dot. And that will not only evoke the smart tag, but it put the focus there. And then you hit enter, and bam, it's just renamed it. And I can keep it. That is control thought. All right, tip number 89. Um, if you ever wanted to go to the, straight to the class view search, um, there is, like, just to go straight up here, there is a keyboard shortcut for it. So if we go to the back to the environment fonts and uh, environment keyboard, and it's called uh, class view go to. So if you ever wondered, like, if these things exist, Here's how you search for these stuff. Like class view, just see what's up. Control KV. KV, and bam, there I am. OK, tip number 90. In five minutes, here we go. Got 10 to go. How to bring up the code definition window in C sharp. I need to, you know, I am bringing up a new IDE because uh, I don't have time. All right. Um, uh, thanks, Visual Studio. You know, it, it wants to make it challenging. You notice that I've done this a few times. It's trying to up the ante on me. All right, so uh, other demos. All right, uh, the definition window, I, I began, unfortunately, just for C sharp. And now, let's say, like, um, if you ever, like, just right-clicked on something and said, go to definition, just to pop that up. But then you have to click here to go back to where you were before. Ah, where you were before. Um, oh, we were there. Um, there is a code definition window that you can go and see. And now this, what it does is wherever you're selecting, like, if I'm selecting this current node, notice that it's doing it for you. It's always, like, saying, like, now I'm clicking. Uh, head now and it goes to where head is defined. All right, tip number 91. Um, let's check out the timer. Oh boy. Okay, tip number 91 is how to use the call, call hierarchy dialog. So control alt K, control K, um, call hierarchy. So current product, uh, click on mirror. Oh yeah, it was like you have to. You have to find it. You call hierarchy. This is a great, great way. You can see calls to and from a particular method in C sharp. Oh, if we can only have it in VB. OK, 92 is if you want Visual Studio to launch faster, when to navigate for this de uh, demo, you can do WMV slash no splash. That will um, not launch a splash screen. And so it should, in theory, launch Visual Studio just a tad bit faster. All right, tip number 93 is you can create project items and project templates. So just to put you in the ballpark file. Um, export template. How many times have you passed by by and never noticed it's there? So if you have a project that you use a bunch of times and you want to create it as a template, or even a particular file and you want to create it as a template, here's a go, and then I was like, yeah, pretty wizard. All right, tip number uh, 40, uh, 94, um, new project from existing code. You can do file, new, um, project from existing code. You just And then there's a wizard that I can't demo because they didn't, this is not adhering to my screen resolution, but you can take the existing code point to it and create a, a wrapper project around it. All right, tip number 95 is how to edit a project file within the uh, IDE. You can come here, you can right click, you can say, um, you uh, unload the project, and you right click, and then you say edit, and you can change stuff in the IDE, and then you can right here and hit uh, reload. All right, tip number 96 is XAML uh, visualizer. Again, I have to hit the right, the startup project. Now I'm going to run this guy, and we'll see if the XML or the uh, XAML visualizers will work. And from here, uh, I, I'll click on this button because there should be a breakpoint there. And from here, I can say, okay, I want to see this button, the sender, 
And right here, there's this drop down WFP, WPF tree visualizer, and here's the visualizer. All right, uh, two more minutes. Tip number 97 is how to see uh, exception that was cart. All right, um, so uh, where's my uh, exceptions? So, so the, this is a SCAR project, hit a five. And now in the watch window, if I hit, if I type in dollar sign exception, I can see the exception that was cart. So number 98 is if you ever um, want to disable this, uh, this guy, like you run and this thing shows up, want to be able to, oh, because it's not the startup project, what is going Oh, because it's already enabled. Notice that when I hit F5, I didn't get that crazy, hey, that's something, you know, um, um, the exception assistant, you can go the debugging in general, and then there's the enable exception assistant. If that thing drives you crazy, you can unpack that. All right, uh, so tip number 99, I have five minutes to show. Um, I have one minute to show. All right, uh, so we're going to do, go back here, and uh, I'm going to show you the most important feature in like 30 seconds. Okay, so a couple of quick things. Um, tip number 98 is historical debugging. We're going to do this, people. Notice I can go up. I can go back in. That's a historical debugger. I'm going to stop. I'm actually going to go. Now, tip number 99 is that it saves it all to a trace file. I can go to the trace file now, double click that, and notice that Visual Studio is now in a hybrid debugging mode. I can actually go to the file. Now, notice what happens here. So I can actually send the log to my developer and see this and see the locals and go back right to it. And now 25 seconds. All right, tip number um, 101 is how to use the extension manager. You go to tools, you go to extension manager, you can download cool extensions. And this is how they get the Visual Studio tip of the day in your star page. You click on this guy, um, you install this extension, and now when you go to the view, star page, you can find the tip of the day and with seven seconds. Okay, <laughs> and with six seconds. That is how you can get the Visual Studio tip of the day in the star page. We finally Finally, one after six or seven years. This was my motivation of doing all this. We wanted the tip in the day in the freaking start page, and <laughs> out of breath. Um, I'm like downing a, a sports bottle right now. Oh, thank you for humoring me through all, all that. But yeah, that that the, this just the, this justice I did to tip number uh, 99 and 100, historical debugger and the. Uh, um, or not a historical debugger, it's called IntelliTrace, where you can um, have the DVR-like recording. Where you can go back in time and like a DVR, you can rewind the stack, but it also saves it to a log where you can send that log to the developer. And that, those two feature, that feature is for the Visual Studio Ultimate. Um, so if you've got a, a, an architect that loves the debug code and wants a Visual Studio ul um, ulti Ultimate, then, then uh, you can send uh, your trace files and then they can uh, debug. So, all right, awesome. I'll, I'm gonna um, give. Uh, uh, I feel like I need to get, take a screenshot of this uh, of this little guy. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna switch back now to um, to here, and uh, I'll ask. I'll stick around and answer questions, but I'm gonna turn the floor back over to uh, uh, to O'Reilly here. <laughs> so I'll, I tried to catch my breath. Sure, that was fantastic. We were all sitting on, on the edge of our seats, kind of. Come on, Sarah, you can do it. You can do it. So congratulations. That was so much fun. And you can you can read the chat room, too, and see what people are saying there. Um, surprisingly, we have no questions so far because everyone was uh, so intent on your demo. So can you hear me, Sarah? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I was just uh, downloading some okay. water. <laughs> Oh, I can't okay. wait for my lunchtime um, run. Oh, so, uh, oh, God, you probably need it. So, uh, Drew has a question. He's asking, what what does that unwind thing do in the exception manager? But really, thank you oh, yeah, for I can, that incredible show. Yeah, I kind of blurred through those last three. Um, but, uh, yeah, so the unwind thing is actually, it comes with, uh, that. the unwind thing was um, the IntelliTrace feature. That is a new feature for Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate. So it's Ultimate only. Um, has something to do with the um, exception, uh, I mean the uh, extensions. Unfortunately, it is not an, ex uh, an extension for Visual Studio. The other thing I need to just really clarify, I didn't have time to do it, 
is that this editor is a whole new editor. It's written with WPF and the um, Managed Accessibility Framework, MEF. And so um, this is not the environment SDK. This is not the, like, the package load keys and all of that stuff before in the past. This is, and it's also not just say, oh, we're going to just rewrite the editor for the sake of rewriting the editor in WPF just to get in feature parity with the old editor. What this allows you to do is in the extension manager now, um, when you install extensions, it's actually through xcopy. So you don't have to worry about registry keys and all this. You can actually just take a glorified, like the zip file where you rename it and you have a manifest file. You just take the VSIX file, which is the extension, you drag and drop it into your folder or use the extension manager, bam, you're up and running. The cool thing here is that the, the Visual Studio team can experiment with stuff. You can experiment. You don't have to wait for um, the next product cycle for to get um, to see what the Visual Studio team wants to do next. They can actually play a little bit more and get more feedback. So it's a whole new editor, a whole new extension. Normally when I have like the full version of this talk, the real version of the, the same version of the talk, I actually demo installing the image insertion extension and taking an image and dragging it into a file. So it's to show that this is not your old, um, this is a whole new editor. All right, well, cool. So I hope that explains. Any other uh, questions? Uh, let's see. I'm seeing one right in front of me. Um, I, I can go back through the chat um, from Ralph. Yeah, is, um, there is there a short? short yeah, I got it. Um, is there a shortcut for finding the currently open file in the Solution Explorer? Ooh, I uh, 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 I like that. Um, hmm. Uh, let me think. For finding, so you're basically so if I understand the question correctly, is you basically want to open up the Solution Explorer and you want it to go directly to that. Um, like the, the highlight to be on that file. I think the track active file is the closest that will happen. I think that if you jump to a file that um, was like hidden, like it was not showing in the Solution Explorer, it was like collapse. I think if you jump to that file, the Solution Explorer will expand. But I don't think there's a way to, um, like an actual keyboard shortcut to jump directly through it. I would assume that the standard Windows control, so when you go to the Solution Explorer, that um, the focus would jump to it um, if you, like, tabbed over to it. So that's my best guess. Um, okay, I'm going to just quickly take a peek up at the, if there were any other, okay, good. okay, I don't see any other questions I'm missing. Um, okay, question, uh, I saw another one down here, do, 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 from Drew. Um, are these tips compiled anywhere? Um, yes, I'm glad you asked. Um, there, um, the tips, uh, the original set of tips for those on 2008, you can find on my blog. Um, there's links everywhere. Um, blogs at MSC and the Comwax Sarah Ford. You can find all um, 400 tips there. Uh, the tip of the day series for 2010 is going on right now as I speak with Zane, my counterpart. And we'll make sure that you get those, um, those tips. Um, but if you search Visual Studio tip of the day, you'll find it all. But Zane's redoing those. Um, I just did 101. Um, um, actually, if you, uh, I did the, what you probably want to do is go back to the Channel 9 um, presentation that I had um, where I did, where I failed by 15 seconds a couple months ago. If you go to that, you'll see um, some more information about the, well, about the 101 tips that I did. All right, let me see. Uh, yeah, and then also, yeah, there, we're working on the updated version of the book. You know, Zane came to me and said, Sarah, I want to continue the Visual Studio Tip of the Day series. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Please, thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't want to do it again. When you have to write like, a tip every day, like you have to blog like every day. If you go on vacation, if you get sick, if you get hurt, you, you got to keep blogging. If you get swamped at work, you're on an airplane, you don't have internet connection. You have to keep it going. So you, you have to keep a queue up. And it's a tremendous amount of work. So um, I'm just kudos to Zane for, uh, I can't thank him enough for wanting to continue on the, uh, the series and make a second edition possible. And with my portion of the my royalties with the second edition, I'm once again going to donate back to my scholarship fund back home for Hurricane Katrina survivors. All right, so other questions. All right, how many dry runs did you do of the presentation to prep and how long did it take? Um, the only other dry run I've ever, I actually have done zero dry runs. I, um, the only other time I've ever done this version of the talk, this 101 tips, was Mount of View. I just went for it. I figured I can demo a tip in about 20, 30 seconds. And um, 55 minutes was the a lot of time I had in Mount of View. So I thought, OK, we'll just go for it. And I also did a um, one of those 
20 slides in 20 seconds presentation, but instead of slides, I did tips. So I knew I had a sense, and it was like a seven minute presentation. So I had an idea that something like this was possible. But if seven minutes is nothing, trying to keep the pace for 55 minutes, that's a challenge. So I was glad, um, I, was glad I was able to pull it off today. Um, what is the link to uh, your foundation? OK, so the, the thing is with the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College, if you search for the Save Waveland Scholarship Fund, you'll, um, you'll see all the information from there. But that's where you can go to, and you can also donate directly. On uh, tell me Twitter. I haven't checked Twitter yet. Um, yeah, but don't, uh, I, I'm, I am slow to respond from time to time because of my new role that we're constantly traveling. But uh, I am getting better at responding to email. I do see it all, and I do my best to get you all answers. And if I, uh, I love editor to questions um, and anything with the IDE. So if I don't know, uh, or especially if it's something that used to work in 2008 and doesn't work in 2010, I love sending the editor to team feedback. Okay, once again, Sarah, I just want to thank you so much because that was so much fun. I, I uh, know that we all enjoyed it, and it was, and I also saw from the comments that people got a lot out of it. So thank you so much for doing this. And oh, thank, thank you, thank you for you. hosting me. Oh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. No, no, the pleasure was ours. So I also want to thank everyone for joining us. It was a great group, and uh, made for it was just a, a fun event. So thank you, everyone. And I think we're out of time, a bit over, so I'm going to close out the room in just a moment. But I want to tell people again, if we're going to send an email with the ebook to everyone, with the link to download it. And if you joined the meeting, this uh, webcast as a guest, or if you uh, didn't register for it, be sure and send your email address to webcast at O'Reilly.com so we can send you a copy of the book. Uh, everyone gets one for sitting through and cheering Sarah on and wow I'm so so glad that you actually succeeded for the first time here I feel honored so um, thanks everyone and I'm going to uh, just uh, give it a minute and close out the meeting thanks <laughs>